Howdy readers, I'm Jason, this is chapter and verse, and uh, this is the Art Movement book tag. Um, this tag was created by uh, Between Lines and Life, and I was tagged by Celia. I will link uh, both of their videos below. So prompt number one uh, is Baroque. Name an extravagant book character or a character who lives an extravagant life. And for that, uh, I'm going to say all of the protagonists in Donna Tartt's The Secret History, but especially uh, Henry, who is kind of the ringleader of these protagonists. And um, Henry is someone who has extraordinarily nice clothes, extraordinarily nice manners, drinks an extraordinary amount. Um, and, uh, everybody, like, wants to be like him, even though he's, uh, clearly uh, just kind of a brilliant sociopath. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's the kind of character you read about and you're just like, all right, where does, where does this young guy get all of his money? Um, who are his parents and why aren't they around? Uh, number two is Impressionism. A book that left a lasting impression on you. Tell us why. And for that, I'm going to choose Angle of Repose by Wallace Stegner. Um, so this, this book tells uh, the story of a marriage um, between uh, Oliver uh, Ward and Susan Burling Ward, I believe is the character's name. And uh, there's a scene early in this book... Um, and the scene takes place, I want to say, late 19th century. And, um, and then they're at, I think they're in New York State, um, and they're courting. And, uh, and Susan Burling Ward wants to look over the falls. And um, I don't know if it's like a Hudson River Falls or something, I can't remember. But, uh, but she wants to look over the waterfalls. And uh, she wants to kind of hang over them. And, uh, and so he holds her by uh, the ankles so that she can kind of stretch out uh, over these waterfalls and, uh, and just get a, get a look at this. That scene, uh, what it describes, um, the intimacy that it describes, and, uh, and just frankly, just the prose itself, just the language itself, um, is so lovely. It was the first, and I think to this day, the only time um, a passage in a novel has made me cry just because it was, it was that beautiful. Um, so yeah, if you haven't read Angle of Repose yet, um, you don't know what you're missing. But maybe I've just given you an inkling. Number three, uh, Expressionism. A book with a very personal and specific, possibly unique outlook on the world. Uh, and for that, I'm going to go with nonfiction. And I'm going to choose uh, Voices from Chernobyl, The Oral History of a Nuclear Disaster by Svetlana Alexievich. Um... And yeah, I mean, if we're talking about a very personal, specific, possibly unique outlook on the world, this is a collection of interviews um, with people who survived the Chernobyl uh, disaster, people who kind of um, grew up in the wake of it, uh, I think maybe even people who were born in the wake of it, and uh, for whom the, the Chernobyl incident kind of hangs over uh, their heads. You know, it casts a long shadow, I think, um, over the lives of people who can remember it. Um, I was just a kid uh, when this happened. I want to say I was, I don't know, 12 years old or something like this. But I can still remember it. Um, you know, I had really strong feelings about the Cold War, uh, even as a kid. Not like a position or anything like that. But I was always uh, fearful um, during the Cold War about what might happen, uh, what could happen. Um, and it was always... A question of um, uh, worst case scenarios uh, for me being a child and uh, so reading this book um, and just getting a sense of the shadow that that accident cast and is still casting uh, over uh, the people in that region um, was incredibly powerful uh, this is a hell of a good book so yeah voices from Chernobyl number four surrealism uh, a book that puts a spin on the reality of our living or a sci-fi book you would recommend. And that is going to be my favorite uh, science fiction novel, uh, Dark Eden. 
by Chris Beckett. And this is actually a book that Celia and uh, Mark Nash did as a buddy read recently. And, um, and I think both of them uh, liked it a good bit, but there were also things about it that, uh, that they each disliked a good bit uh, as well. But, um, but yeah, this is my favorite science fiction novel. Uh, it's the first in the trilogy. I have yet to read the third book. The reason for that is dorky, um, but I love this cover. And the second cover um, is kind of designed in the same way. It's got kind of a, I don't think you can really tell, but there's a, uh, oh, a kind of holographic quality to the first and second covers. And then the third cover here in the States um, is completely different because Broadway Books, for whatever reason, um, decided not to publish the third volume in a trilogy, the first of which won the Arthur C. Clarke Award. Um, I have no idea why that is, but because that is, the third cover has um, a completely different design, which just pisses me off, and it's the, it's the sole reason that I have yet to buy all three of these books. So I've got the library copy here. I just found this book um, deeply mysterious and evocative, and it's set on an alien planet the ecology of which is, is like nothing else I've ever read before or seen in a film before. And, um, and I just felt like there was just a really, just really deep, deep human sadness at the core of this thing as well. Um, I very rarely read for long, long stretches at a time. Um, I almost never read for three or four hours straight. And, uh, and I think this is the last novel that did that to me. And that was a few years ago. Um, but yeah, there was one, there was one night, uh, or maybe it was a weekend afternoon, I can't remember. But, uh, yeah, I was just curled up on the living room floor, and I think I read this for four hours without putting it down. And that is very uncharacteristic, uh, of me. Um, I'm still kind of recovering from my short attention span. Developed, uh, watching hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of films in college. But anyway, Dark Eden by Chris Beckett. Uh, that is my surrealism choice. Number five, Pointillism, a book whose different narratives make up a bigger picture. Uh, and I'm actually going to go with films here, um, speaking of films. And I'm going to go with uh, Krzysztof Kieslowski's Three Colors trilogy, uh, which is three movies about completely different characters. But you see those characters crop up in the backgrounds. I mean, literally, just in the distance um, of the other people's stories in the other films. Um, this is a technique that was um, within a single film that was made really, really popular by Robert Altman um, back in the uh, 70s and on through the early 90s, actually, maybe even on through Gosford Park. Um, shortcuts is probably his best example of it. Um, I'm not a big fan of Shortcuts, though. But, uh, but I think uh, the Three Colors trilogy is one of the great achievements in uh, modern cinema. And, um, and I love that about it. I love how it um, shows us this kind of very tenuous, vague interconnectedness uh, between people. And um, yeah, if you haven't seen these films, uh, you absolutely should. I'm going to be showing the first of them blue in my Mortality Project uh, next year. So I'll leave a link to that project announcement uh, below this video. Number six, uh, Pop Arts, a book that criticizes consumerism in some way or makes you look critically at current times. And for that, I'm going nonfiction again. And that is uh, Days of Destruction, Days of Revolt, uh, which is part kind of reportage, part graphic novel uh, by Chris Hedges and Joe Sacco. And um, basically, if you are somebody who thinks America is being made great again, or are somebody who thinks America has always been great, or somebody who thinks America is great right now, um, Read this book, and then we'll talk. Uh, this is an antidote to that feeling. And, um, yeah, I'm not merely down on America. Uh, no matter what country you live in, dig around. Find the skeletons in the closet and the monsters um, lying under the bed because they're there. And uh, this book um, exposes a lot of that uh, here in contemporary America. So, brilliant book. Uh, number seven, uh, Dadaism, a weird book or a book that puts a spin on the novel form. And I'm going to go with that second uh, part of that, a book that puts a spin on the novel form, and choose Far Tortuga by Peter Matheson, uh, which is a novel that I haven't read all of yet. But if you look, 
It is a novel in, uh, well, it's written in dialect, right? It's written in vernacular. Um, so all of the dialogue uh, takes some real getting used to. But it's also written in these just kind of lovely, poetic uh, kind of vignettes. And, um, I mean, the whole book is this way. So, yeah, Peter Matheson was a genius. And a lot of people, um, I think Matheson himself actually considered this his masterpiece. Number eight, performance art. Uh, a book that would make a great movie or your favorite play. So I'm going to go with a book that I think would make a great play. Um, and that would be the YA or teen novel Tender Morsels by Margot Lanigan. Um, and I so much think this would make a wonderful play that I have more than once thought about um, just as a project for myself, not to share with anybody, uh, but more than once I have thought about um, adapting this for the stage, uh, just again for myself. So this is a wonderful, strange, absolutely disturbing and beautiful book. Bonus question number one, a work of fiction that discusses or features art in some way. And that is uh, The Family Fang by Kevin Wilson. And, um, and it features performance art. And um, yeah, uh, a couple of parents, let's say, the, uh, the Fang matriarch and patriarch who um, take performance art to really new levels. Uh, and it's a hilarious book. And then lastly, uh, who's your favorite artist or what's your favorite uh, painting? And my favorite painting is called uh, The Execution of Lady Jane Grey uh, by Paul De La Roche. This is in the National Gallery in London. And, um, and while I was in London for two and a half weeks, many, many years ago, I went back and I looked at that painting probably three or four times sitting there for a good hour, two hours each time, just looking at it. And um, I've had dreams about it. Um, yeah, and one of the things I love most about it is how, so as she's being kind of knelt down uh, before the chopping block, blindfolded, um, her arms, you can see movement. I mean, it's, it's a painting, so there's not actually movement in it, but you can, you can sense her hands uh, reaching, reaching out for the chopping block and not finding it. And that kind of detail in a moment, in a painting, in a character, in a painting whose death is imminent, who's going to be dead in moments, um, really, I just thought revealed a tremendous, um, intimacy and, um, and tremendous vulnerability. And, uh, and the fact that he could communicate that in a still image I, I just I just find it kind of mind blowing, um, and I and I really don't understand why this painting isn't better known, but there it is. Uh, so that was the art movement uh, book tag. Um, I'm not sure who all has done this yet. Um, usually I, I kind of look into that before I make the video, but it didn't cross my mind tonight. I'm sorry. Uh, so if this interested you, I will have the prompts in the description box below, and you should do it. Anyway, I will see and talk to you guys again uh, very soon. Adiós.